What do you think is, if it's not a conspiracy, if there's nothing behind it, why are they? Uh, well, I, I personally, uh, I, just, I just had this conversation recently with uh, some friends of mine about this. The destruction of the family unit and programs that have been put in place that have facilitated that for so long, I think have contributed greatly to that. And as a community, it frustrates me that black America has allowed, if this is a conspiracy, if all this is true, what happened to making individual choices? What happened to the church leaders and, and community staying together to make sure that we didn't make choices like this that got you at that you know that end up you end up breaking the law? So it's it's frustrating for me because we've glorified gangster culture. We've glorified going to prison. White corporations and music executives are making millions and millions of dollars pushing this music and, and entertainment on, on our youth, and it's okay. There's no shame in this anymore. And that and, and I feel that that has nothing to do with white America. That starts right here in our communities at home, where we've given this a pass and made this okay. 70% illegitimacy, that is our responsibility. And that's why, I, you know, you lose opportunity and you, you don't have access to the same opportunities through education because people have been so disempowered in our urban communities that it's a cycle that is becoming even more and more difficult to break. And I think there's certain responsibility within the community, and that's where it needs to start as well. I mean, on top of outside factors, but I think we ourselves have a lot more responsibility in this than a, a, a conspiracy. So we, have, we still have the choice. Let's take the young lady. Tara, I, quite frankly, I think most of the stuff coming out of your mouth is just bullshit. I really do. I'm yeah, sorry. I, okay. I just think you're making over gross generalizations on black people that just don't need to be said in a venue like this. Like what? You need, to, you need to back it up with statistics. Go ahead, like what? Um, Give me an example. I'll be happy to back it up. Years ago, uh, regardless if you were dark as Sidney Poitier, as light as Lena Horne, whether you were a garbage man, whether you were as brilliant as uh, uh, W.E. Du Bois, it didn't matter. You, we all didn't have rights. That's why we all came together, because we couldn't sit in the front of the bus, we couldn't have right to equal education, we couldn't have the right to equal housing. We're the only race in the country or in the world does not, that does not reach back and help their own. That's why we're in this predicament, because we won't reach back and help our own. That's why we're in this problem, because we have failed to do that. We don't even stand up for our own children anymore. In Chicago, we had 37 black children shot in the head last year. Where was the public outrage for that? We all know about that. What's the girl's name? A Casey, the little girl that died. Any time a white child dies, you know, we want to sit up and cry and, and say, oh, you know, the, the child went up to heaven. God doesn't want any little white babies in heaven, just our children. The, the, the flag would be half mass when it comes down to, to, to a white child. We are allowing this to happen on our watch. There is a Holocaust going on in this country, and we are laughing and singing and drinking and partying through. And this is the Black Journalist Convention. Every black journalist in this country should use their job as a platform to bring uh, uh, outrage to this subject. But we don't have the courage of a Harriet Tubman. We're talking about Frederick Douglass. We don't have that. Uh, did you say Frederick Douglass? Yeah. We don't have that kind of courage anymore. Black people are afraid to lose their job. They're afraid to lose their position. And they're sitting around waiting for Barack Obama to do something about it. The man got into the White House. He's done enough. I think the problem that some of us was hearing is that an attack on the, on the black middle class we're not doing for those of us who didn't achieve. Let's put it that way. Sometimes I like to say, and I tell people all the time, the best you can do for yourself, sometimes the best you can do for other people is to do good for yourself. I'm not saying you have to go get shot in the head like Malcolm X, is, uh, Malcolm X or Martin Luther King or Megra Evers, but black bourgeoisie America is standing in, in the position they're in because people died so they could be there. People died so they could be there. They turned King's dream into a nightmare. Yeah. They got through that narrow crack of success I wrote about called Damn Near Impossible and just won't reach back and help somebody else. We ran off to the suburbs and, and the best that black boys, and I'm speaking because I know what they do. I understand it. I know the conversations they're having. And they feel like, well, as long as I got mine, and as long as I sent my child to, a, uh, to Stanford or Yale or Harvard or Spelman, I've done my job. No, you haven't. Martin Luther King died. He had a family, he could his father made money back in the day. His father had a big church. He could have stepped off and been about personal 
uh, grandizement and things that were important to him. He didn't have to do what he did. Rosa Parks didn't have to get up. She did. Black bourgeoisie America has dropped the ball. Black leadership in this country has dropped the, dropped the ball. If they haven't, why are we in this predicament? But what can we do to really motivate people to get off of our butts and get out there and start, you know, I mean, like the people in Egypt, you know, who went out there and protested and risked their lives. Let's take the young lady. I really enjoy your message of trying to get the bourgeois, middle class, African Americans to do something for the, you know, in prison or underprivileged African Americans. I love that message. But I don't think you're going about it practically. Um, I'm going to give you an example. I am an African American person who lives in Chicago. I know exactly what you're talking about when you say there are, you know, 32 young kids who got shot in the head and, um, and I'll give you another example. On Monday evening, I will be seeing at the funeral of a 21-year-old girl from my church who got shot in the head in Chicago. Now, at the same time, I live in the middle of downtown Chicago. I make pretty good money, and I'm not trying to live in, in the ghetto, quite frankly. And I think most of the people who you're talking to, you know, they they educate themselves, they earn that money. You need to give them more practical ways on how they can go back to the communities. Just telling them to go back to a, rent, a school in the middle of the ghetto, and I've done that. Like, I was in schools for three straight years bringing inspirational people to talk to his kids. Just saying that telling people to do that, that's not practical. So See, I guess what I'm I asking told you, you, I'm asking you have to roll up your sleeves. This is not cute. You are going to have to go where the problem is. The problem is in Finger High School. You got to go south and deal with this problem. That's bourgeoisie America. It's too dirty. We don't want to deal with people carrying guns and pistols and girls that are pregnant. Do you know Roberson High School has 70 black girls pregnant in the school? And there's no black nurses or lawyers or people that want to go in there and help? You got to roll up your sleeves. It's dirty. Why do we want somebody like you, somebody who grew up privileged, but did not use their opportunity and make it? make a good life for themselves. Why do we want you coming into our schools telling them, oh, look, I did this. Because I've been there. You don't have nothing to say that they're going to listen to. If you haven't carried a sister, if you haven't carried a gun, if you haven't been a gang member, if you haven't been into anything, they're not going to listen to you. I can't, I can't help that. Hold on. You can't say, listen. I can't help that. Excuse me.